We now continue our conversation with Supermarket Sweep set decorator Ray Deslich. The live studio audience was an important aspect of the original. How did you manage without one? Absolutely. This was supposed to have a live audience with several hundred people, I think. And that was our fourth wall of the set. One wall of it was just going to be bleachers and stage drapes and people and no set dressing whatsoever. Uh, so I thought that was my easy part of the set. And then of course the pandemic hit, we ended up not being able to have hundreds of people on the set. We had to brainstorm, you know, what goes in a supermarket that's not food because it needed to be an area that was essentially dead to gameplay. Very often there would be pedestal cameras over there or that would usually be where our crane camera went. So it had to be something that wasn't important. So we ended up going with a seasonal section. It had things like inflatable pool toys, pool noodles, lots of coolers, patio cushions, big colorful items that were also all on wheels so that they could get moved around. It ended up adding a little bit more money to our budget and it was kind of hard to cram that in there after we had already submitted a show budget early on and then, you know, we had this COVID change to accommodate. The security office is a completely new addition to Supermarket Sweep. It is a sort of a back office, a little bit of a break room just for the security guard though. Three big monitors up on his desk so he can hang out and put his feet up and watch all the action. So there's a little bit of banter between our host Leslie Jones and the security guard. Then during the big sweep, to give Leslie a way to comment on the action, she goes into the security office and she watches them on these big monitors on you know her voice of God mic and is able to shout funny things at them, to comment on what they're doing. That replaces what the show announcer would do during the original one. That one was really great for me to decorate because that was maybe the most traditional set decoration project on this show. It was all me and I'm very used to doing very like gritty, realistic sets. So that was like my set dressing comfort zone. File cabinets and paperwork and bulletin boards with stuff written on all the papers and sometimes inside jokes written on the signs pinned to the wall and all the little grittiness of an everyday office. You know, air conditioning vents and outlets and fire extinguisher material and things like that. And I love putting little Easter eggs in sets. There's a sign in the security office that says there's no crying in groceries. So this is a grocery store. You're gonna have name brands. How involved was the studio ad department? Any decorator that's done an ABC show knows that they are very, very strict as regards to ad sales. So there was a lot of interaction between the gameplay and the prop department about what kind of products they were allowed to use. And then there was a lot of promo. I think that we used every single promo agency in town that had a consumer good that we could put on the shelves. Cause we ended up using some larger items too, you know, like lodge cast iron and uh, Yeti coolers. It was just so much work. We were constantly bringing them in. In particular, I used a promo agency that reps Colombian roses for my floral department and they were huge help. It's a big, big job on shows like this. So Ray, what was the shooting schedule like? So we would just take it almost like a normal narrative show. First, we're gonna do intros, and then we're gonna do handoffs, and then we would do handoffs. Then we would roll on the trivia games. And so we just treated these segments of the game show as if they were their own scenes. And we were just doing the same scenes every single day over and over again, but with different people. And then of course, after the big sweep, uh, you know, the set's a big mess. We call reset, we take 30 and, you know, we reset everything. And so I think we ended up doing one and a half episodes per day. Uh, we were able to cram 10 episodes into just about two weeks. Have you worked on a game show before or is this the first? This was my first proper game show. I was pleased to see that it is more structured. We're going to a set and we're gonna shoot these scenes and it was very clear what we were doing. And that part was really nice. So it was a little bit like a narrative in that way. On a reality show, you have 
a lot more producers and then you also have the network has a lot more input on the creative even people from the agency and people from the production company and then you still have your director so there's so many more cooks in the kitchen they might have conflicting opinions and you have to be really good at sorting them all out. Our production designer on this one, Stuart Frossel, is a very, very experienced uh, reality and game show production designer. So he was really good at juggling all of the different people. I think that this show has a lot of whimsy in the set dressing and I love whimsy in my sets. Supermarket Sweep is known for being funny, but it's mostly in the contestants or their hijinks or the falling down. and. We think that we really invented some funny set dressing and this is kind of a thing that I get from Drunk History where we're like, how can we make the set funny on its own? For some reason we had Lean Into the Whimsy written on one of the whiteboards in the art department office and I think we did that. I think we leaned into the whimsy really well. Ray, it was great speaking with you. Thanks for joining us for Inside the Set. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.